Hey guys, welcome back to another Weird Wednesday. I'm Asher's and Pat O is not here. Um, he quit. I'm just kidding. He didn't quit. He's just, uh, you know, it's Thanksgiving week. You know, the man, uh, you know, he deserves a break. Um, so, <laughs> you know, we had kind of talked about what to do with Pat's departure. We could have had a guest on, you know, to co-host something. Um, could have did a pre-recorded episode and put it out that way. You know, instead, I'm going to give you guys a, a special treat. Um, what we're going to go ahead and do is we are going to drop one of our Patreon exclusive episodes. Um, over on the Patreon, we do this series called Weird World, where every month you get a new episode um, showcasing one of the states uh, in our many great United States of America um, and all the weird things that you can do there. I mean, it's it's famous cryptids it's you know ufo stories it's weird abandoned places it's ghost stories it's just you know little slices of strange that that you can find in all of these states um and it's honestly it's a lot of fun to do so um yeah if you're not subscribed to the patreon that this is this is what you're missing out on um you know i'm, I'm going to show a, a great example of what you could be hearing monthly um with a patreon subscription so we're going to do that this week. Uh, we will be back next week uh, with a regular, you know, our regular viewing hours, <laughs> regularly scheduled show, whatever the fuck you want to call it. I don't know. There won't be um, any news this week either. Um, you know, again, we're putting out this Patreon exclusive episode. Um, if you guys want to listen to the other episodes, this one's the most recent. This is the one we did on Connecticut. If you want to listen to the other episodes, go to patreon.com slash it's Asher's or follow the link in the description and you can go catch up on what we have done thus far. Um, next week, next month is, I'm sorry, Delaware. Um, we drop the episodes the first Wednesday of every month. So you get, you know, of course the Wednesday show and then the um, weird world episodes on top. And there's tons of other great stuff over there too. Um, lots of fun things. I, you know, I just, just little slices of life things that me and Pat o cover. Um, I'd like to bring on some guests to some, you know, exclusive topics over there. These shows aren't as long, um, you know, but they're, again, it's exclusive content. You're not going to get it anywhere else. You're not going to get it unless you pay for it. You know, that's what it's there for. Um, so there's that. Also, of course, we have to mention, um, because we are obligated to do so, um, we are now being sponsored by Manscaped. And as a matter of fact, I know that a lot of people, with it being Thanksgiving week, um, it is also the weekend of, uh, money spending, right? We got Black Friday, we got Cyber Monday. Manscaped, of course, has got the same deal going on. I, I don't know what those deals look like, but I can tell you for sure, you can get 20% off and free shipping if you go to manscaped.com and you use code STAYWEIRD. Um, all one word, no spaces. You can make it capital or not. That's up to you. It doesn't matter. Um, you know, buy, buy something for you. Buy something for your balls. Buy something for your best friend's balls. Um, you know, you want to get your, I love this line from them and I'm going to steal it. You want to get your jingle balls in order for the holiday. So uh, go to manscaped.com. Like I said, use code STAYWEIRD for 20% off plus free shipping. Um, I've actually really enjoyed the product so far, and I'm not just saying that because they want me to. Um, <laughs> they are really, <laughs> they are really neat products. Hopefully, when Pato comes back, he can give us a more detailed breakdown of how his ball de deodorant held up. Um, <laughs> we'll s we'll see what happens. <laughs> but anyway, guys, um, without further ado, here is the Patreon exclusive Weird World, Connecticut. Enjoy. Happy Thanksgiving. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Weird World, where we talk about the uh, weird things in, in the world. I'm here with uh, Pat O. Yes, you are. <laughs> you would be correct. That's <laughs> how are you, Pat O? <laughs> I'm all right. I won't ask about your weekend. I already know how it went. It was, right. it, it was good. You did lots of cocaine and screwed lots of hookers. So. Oh, no, I didn't. Don't say that. <laughs> Talk you up. Pat O, what do you know about Connecticut? What did you know about Connecticut prior to this? Um, I know that, so I used to, uh, you know, I talk about being an avid gamer, gamer a lot. I go to the different conventions and uh, I do a monthly Dungeons and Dragons game up at Rock Island Public House here in Chicago. And the, um, I used to do streaming too, not on Twitch because the, the stream that we ran was uh, 18 and over. 
So it actually was run on Pornhub of all places is where it was hosted. So if you go, I have, I have uh, quite a few Pornhub videos if you ever find yourself on that website. But um, the, the name of the uh, outfit that I gamed with was called Alternative Play. Um, well, that was like the production company. And uh, I think it was called Show Us Your Crits. Like show us your tits, but show us your crits. And a crit yeah. is like when you roll a 20 on a die. And it was the guys that ran it were based out of Connecticut. So um, all I really knew about Connecticut was there was a lot of Kingsters there. And in fact, the one of the guys, JC, who kind of uh, headed the whole thing, he recently founded the Kink Emporium, Connecticut's unique social club. And it's a uh, it's like a kink group in Connecticut that gets together and they have events and they have play parties and stuff. So um, if that's something that you're interested in and you live in Connecticut and you like to get weird with strangers or friends, you know, maybe you can become friends with them after a while. The Kink Emporium in Connecticut. Check them out. Okay. <laughs> that's all I got. That's all I had. <laughs> but I, the first thing I, I noticed about Connecticut that was uh, strange and unworldly is uh, the way that it's spelled because that shit makes no sense. Uh, yeah. Um, I was very upset about it, uh, to be honest with you. <laughs> <laughs> pretty goddamn offended that that's how they spell connecticut fucking weird bro fucking weird just it makes no sense i agree um i really yeah i've never been to connecticut um i've never been to the new england area in general yeah me, you know, me neither. I, I was thinking about it and i was like man should we have just done new england like as its own thing but um you know because i'm like surely connecticut's like a city long right it's not very big <laughs> It's no, it's like a suburb of New York, kind of. It's um, it's very small, yeah. Yeah, I've and, learned enough about it, so I mean, I don't know if we necessarily have to group them all together, but yeah, I mean, there's smaller areas, you know. Um, th- th- my point was that there are other smaller states also, and eventually we'll be covering those. Um, so I was worried. I was like, what am I going to find in Connecticut? Mm-hmm. Um, and I was I was pleasantly surprised. Me too. Yeah, I really was. Now, granted, there's not as much as like you know some of the other states, but um i mean gosh it's still so far to me after researching all this connecticut um is still better than fucking alabama alabama's been the worst one <laughs> so far i don't i don't want to i don't throw shade on alabama but i will say that this was um you know i usually find like two to three uh things about every state that we do you know because we these episodes aren't like super long sure but um all the stuff that i found for connecticut like i was super engaged by yeah so this this was a way better i know when we when we saw we got to connecticut i was like fuck i don't even know how to spell this thing and then when we started getting into it i was like all right this i feel good about this this is a good episode this will be a good episode we got some good stuff here sure yeah i mean uh, you know well like i said i obviously um so far you know my my least favorite's been in alabama but um i'm not too sad about connecticut so why don't we uh get right into it pato mm-hmm. let's bottom out so um cryptids we'll start with uh some cryptids here um really not a lot yeah of course there's some bigfoot sightings and some weirdness um they do have like a particular creature called the glaucus or glaucus or you know what i don't even know how to fucking say it but the stories of it weren't very um they weren't impressive to me so you know while they don't have like a mothman or anything or or you know patterson gimlin film or anything like that I did want to talk about their mountain lions. Mm. A little different. A little different for cryptozoology, huh? So um, a lot of people have been saying for a long time in a lot of the state, not the West states, but, you know, on the East Coast here, that there are mountain lions. And um, we're probably going to see that trend pop up time and time and again with different states. But I wanted to talk about Connecticut in particular because there was an incident in 2011 where someone actually hit a cougar with their car and killed it. (laughs) in connecticut and so the fishing game they they took the body and they somehow and i don't really understand this process dna tested the the mountain lion and determined that yes it's a mountain lion clearly but it's from south carolina how the fuck can you tell that with dna testing i don't know maybe because of its diet or because it was this the strain or something i mean maybe because the lineage from the dna and they found that like relatives of this creature lived in south carolina but that doesn't mean that you would think that wouldn't mean that they couldn't have you know what's a mountain lion doing in south carolina i didn't know they were there 
uh, maybe they are, but I guess, I guess they are. That makes sense. But that's not that far away. Like, why couldn't they? Anyway, Connecticut's, uh, Connecticut's deal is that there's not a breeding population of mountain lion. Like, while some people could see them, it's probably because they are someone's pet. Mm-hmm. Or they're seeing bobcats or coyotes, and they're mistaking that for a mountain lion, which, I don't know. I just think that the states over here need to stop and realize that there are fucking mountain lions here. (laughs) In the Midwest, yeah. In the Midwest, for sure. People see them all the time, constantly. That was like one one of the biggest reports I have. I saw a panther. That's what they say. Wow. And people are seeing them, you know, I mean, people catch them on cameras. I think me and Ann saw one driving to West Virginia one night, hit on the side of the road. It was dead or it was just showing? Yeah, it was, it was dead. Oh, well, I mean, I don't know, but but it, I'm pretty sure it was dead. It looked pretty dead. I don't know what it was. It was like a lump of um, like tan fur, right? So my assumption, you know, before you get up on it, you're like, oh, it's a deer, except it was a lot bulkier than a deer. And you could see, like, the way it was laid out on the road, you couldn't see the front of it. You were looking at the back. But, like, yeah. underneath it, there was a paw. And it was, like, a big fucking cat paw. And I and we were driving by it. And I was like, was that a mountain lion? And Anne's like, I don't know. I'm like, Dude, should we go back? And she was like, no, it's West Virginia. We're not stopping. <laughs> 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 she was not having it. I think we should have went back. But I'm right. almost positive that's what we saw. I mean, maybe unless it was a big, big dog. It was big. And uh, we just kept going. So, but anyway, so I believe that there probably are mountain lions in Connecticut. And uh, again, they just need to shut the fuck up and admit it. So, sure. that's what I have for cryptids. Oh, okay. <laughs> that was it. Pano, do you want to go? It's a short list. Mine's not very long either. So, oh, well, so the uh, first one I want to talk, we'll just go back and forth then. So, um, what I wanted to talk about, the first thing I want to bring up is uh, Hookman's Cemetery. Sure. which is found in uh, Seymour, Connecticut. It's actually Great Hill Cemetery. And uh, it's uh, one of those hot spots for paranormal activity. The kids like to go there because the legend is that the cemetery caretaker who had a hook for, the ha- hook for a hand hung himself in a tree outside of the cemetery. And if you parked under the tree, your car would stall and you'd hear the hook scratching on your roof. Now, What made this so, and this is, you've probably heard this story before, and it was crazy, like, this is, this is patient zero as far as the story is concerned. Sure. When I thought about it, this is probably, like, the first scary story I was ever told, right? That story about the young couple that that goes out and their car breaks down, they're in the cemetery and the car breaks down, and there's a story that there's, uh, like, a killer on the loose or there's something, and... And the guy goes out for help, and the chick's in the car, and she hears something brushing against the roof of the car, and it ends up being the boyfriend the tongue, and he was hanging there all night long, and his hand was outstretched, and it was just his fingers grazing the top of the car. Um, probably the first scary story I was ever told. Yeah. And uh, it was interesting to find its uh, place of origin. The other one, I guess, too, is the hook on the on the the rear view mirror, the side view mirror of the car. Have you ever heard that one? I've heard it on the window. Okay, where the, yeah, someone there was someone with a hook, and uh, they drove away, and then they look, and the hook's dangling for I don't know. I'm shocked that they haven't done a horror franchise with with the hook handed killer. Isn't that urban legend? Did they do that in Urban? I thought Urban Legend, they did, like, all the different Urban Legends. Well, I mean, that, that's technically, like, what this fall... I've never seen the Urban Legend movie, because that was that was far enough either. along where I realized this was this was based on Scream, and it wasn't Scream, and, you know, whatever. So, no, I never bothered to check out the Urban Maybe Legend Maybe it's pretty movies. good. I don't know. <laughs> well, never they made a, I don't know. Yeah, they made a couple of them. But, they did. Uh, well, and then the, um, uh, uh, I Know What You Did Last Summer, was a, he had a hook. Yeah, but he was like a fisherman. Yeah, he was. Yeah, he was like he had like a fish hook or something. I don't know. Yeah, that was a little bit different. But yeah, like that's big, that's you know. good. That's something to think about. I guess they're they. It's criminally underused a hook hand killer, <laughs> poised for ripe for a comeback. 
you know i i don't know you know i'll be honest urban legends is what got me into the not the movie obviously but <laughs> urban legends in general that's what got me into the weird stuff you know you always heard I, I was always fascinated by like bloody mary and you know like you said the um the hook hand guy and you know the um babysitter oh your clown statue is really freaking me out we don't have a clown statue you know um th those types of stories really got me into the weird um you know it was kind of disappointing to find out that these things weren't real um but i suppose that's why i transitioned in things that were um yet to be solved so <laughs> well this one is and uh this one is. At great hill cemetery in seymour connecticut so I'll stay have, the fuck out i'll have to check that out um, don't, don't don't jesus haven't you been paying attention to anything i just said don't check no, it out don't go i'm there. gonna check it out that's if you go there <laughs> The hook-handed caretaker will scratch your roof. <laughs> what are you doing? I got an SUV. Nobody would notice. It'll be all right. <laughs> poor Anne. I'm going to gonna put her through this now, her poor take, car. Yeah, take Anne's Jeep. <laughs> yeah. All right. Go up there. Probably, yeah. Um, no, that's very cool. I didn't realize that, uh, you know, that one's kind of a, I don't know. It's kind of a guilty pleasure uh story right there I, I really liked it so thank you for sharing that. Oh, you got it babe <laughs> um i'll go i'll share two i've decided the order of things i got two to share okay um these are like places that you can go um apparently allegedly the barnum museum is there in bridgeport connecticut you know who pt barnum is huh of right? course the circus guy the circus fucking guy the um, greatest so, showman on earth isn't that you yeah from yeah, that movie? yeah oh wow yeah. okay that's him um, oh, the singer i was not a fan of um surprisingly i'm a big like pt barnum fan i'm like big into the old circus scene back in the day like that's i like that shit um and i like barnum because man he was such a con artist but he brought weird into the mainstream i mean he really did and uh made it popular you know and so i i gotta give him credit or credits too but yeah there's a there's a barnum museum where you can go and see different things that belong to different people that performed with him of course things that belong to him um there's a replica of his original fiji mermaid he created the fiji mermaid and there's a replica there there's also an elephant like a preserved elephant that you can see um so a lot of weird stuff that's obviously very touristy another thing that i wanted to bring up and I don't really know too much about it, but I saw the picture of it and I was like, oh, wow, um, is the Cunningham Tower. And the reason why I'm bringing this up is because it, um, it's just like this concrete, it's like a, it's a watchtower and that's what it was made for as like a watchtower. We have almost the same exact fucking structure right here in good old Kettering, Ohio. And what's crazy about it is that like, what it is it's we call it the witch's tower or frankenstein's castle here in kettering it's like an urban legend here and i know this is about connecticut um but our witch's tower slash frankenstein's castle it's uh it's kind of a mystery nobody really knows where it came from like no, we have, a, no, we have oh, a monk's boy. castle i wonder if it looks the same send me a picture of it um because i want to see because this thing looks like exactly the same and i was like oh holy shit we have that and there's a big mystery to it now inside again it's just this concrete it's, it looks like the castle thing you know like a castle piece right but it's just a tower and you know you, back in the day you could get inside of the witch's tower and and people would and people would get inside and party and all it was inside of this tower was a spiral a, a spiral staircase that went up to the ceiling and um one time a couple this was like an urban legend except it's not this actually happened um a couple was trying to get out of the rain they stopped at the witch's tower they got inside and they were standing on the spiral staircase and it was struck by fucking lightning and the girl died mm. died at the witch's tower so anyway it just piqued my interest it's a neat little structure it's a good photo op this particular one doesn't seem to have any type of scary stories associated with it um but it is a, a weird place it's all boarded up now just like ours is they don't let it you can't get in there now because that girl died um but yeah i just thought that was that was neat so those were my two oh, okay I got, more. I got more after you we're just kind of going back and forth <laughs> yeah so the next one i want to talk about is the connecticut witch trials 
most people know the uh, infamous Salem witch trials, but few realize that Connecticut has an older and arguably more colorful history when it comes to the accusations and executions for witchcraft. So by 1692, when uh, hysteria was just starting to sweep through Salem, between 9 and 11 women had already been executed in Connecticut for witchcraft, uh, including uh, Alice Young, who was the first woman hanged in New England, possibly the New World, for purportedly having consorted with Satan before it was over 35 people would stand accused of crimes involving witchcraft. So uh, Connecticut has a slew of locations named after the devil, including Devil's Den. There are five different Devil's Den locations in Connecticut. The Devil's Backbone, there's four different Connecticut. Satan's Kingdom, there's two. Uh, Devil's Island, Hell's Hollow, Toffet Ravine, which I kind of like that one. That's kind of a cool name. And even <laughs> Devil's Dripping Pan. <laughs> These are all different locations around Connecticut. Wow. So, um, yeah, it was... Uh, it was an uh, interesting place to live. Witchcraft officially became a crime in Connecticut in 1642. The law stating that if any man or woman be a witch, that is, half consultant with a familiar spirit, they shall be put to death. Uh, New Haven enacted its witchcraft law in 1655. If any person be a witch, he or she shall be put to death according it. Wow. And it quotes uh, Exodus, Leviticus, De- Deuteronomy, etc. So, um, <laughs> etc. <cetera>. Yeah. <laughs> now, do you want me to read the grounds of grounds for examination of a witch? I do. Yeah. Okay. Number one. Uh, I'm not going to actually. Well, I'll I'll start to read these. It's kind of old English. It's kind of kind of shitty, but sure. Uh, number one, notorious defamation by ye common report of the people, a ground of suspicion. Number two. Second ground for strict examination is if a fellow witch gave testimony on his examination or death, yet su- yet such a person is a witch. But this is not sufficient for con- conviction or condemnation. Three, if after cursing there follow death or at least mischief to ye party. If after quarreling or threatening a... Pr- pr- I'm not going to... F- it's all goofy shit. None of this is real. You know what I mean? It's like basically... But you, they bring up the devil's mark. If ye party suspected have ye devil's mark, for this thought when ye devil maketh his covenant with ye, he always leaves his mark behind him to know ye for own yet is, if not evident, and it can be given for such a mark. So that's something that you hear talked about a lot in uh, mythology and literature is this idea of a devil's mark, which is basically just a birthmark. Um, and there's no basis for this anywhere in the Bible. I don't know where people come up with this stuff from. This is the, these are human made laws. This is, there is no religious text to back any of this up. It's strictly people just kind of coming up with this shit off the top of their head. Um, so wait, wait, if you have a, a birthmark just any birthmark you've never heard of this the devil's mark the idea of that okay yeah that's a big thing you see it in a lot of like old horror stories too uh so this is this is rule number six for uh and grounds of examination of a witch okay if ye party suspected have ye devil's mark for this thought when for this thought when ye devil maketh his covenant with ye he always leaves his mark behind him to know ye for his own yet is if not evident reason in can be given for such a mark so if you have a a mark on your body and it's not like oh it's that's a burner oh that's a scar that could be considered like a devil's mark do you have any birthmarks pato i mean i'm irish i got fucking freckles all over the place i don't now some irish people look like they're like they got hit with shit through thrown through a screen door right you know what I mean? Like that, that kind of freckles. Like I don't have that, but we've fucking seen you before. Like I'm, I got a couple, you know, I've, I've one, I've one birthmark. Really? That's it. I do. I have one. It is, uh, this is exciting. Actually, it is right in between my titties. Okay. Smack dab right in between my titties. And I'm not kidding. It's shaped like a mistletoe. 
Yeah, so that would probably get you hung or burnt or burned alive. I just have like random like Irish freckle spots on my arms that are from the sun and shit. No, I have like straight up a birth and it's always been there, I guess. You know, and people say I mean it's not as like prominent as it always has been and you know, some people say birthmarks are like an indication of like how you died in a past life and that's believable. Somebody stabbed me right to the heart. Really? You never heard that? No, one more time. I'm sorry. I was reading something. So birthmarks are, if you have a birthmark on your body, they're, um, it's indicative of how you died in a past life. So mine being right in between my boobs, and that would mean somebody stabbed me through the heart. Because you're a vampire or some shit is that what you're trying to tell my ashes? That would make sense, yeah. You're a vampire. I'm a vampire, yeah. I, I think, if anything, I was a werewolf. Okay. It's very hairy. Not a dog man. I fucked dog man. I fucked him for sport. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Connecticut witch trials. In the kennel. In the kennel. Oh Sorry, my god. Bit in their shoulders while I fucking nodded at him. Um, yeah. <laughs> there, there's a really good website called Damned Connecticut. And uh, if you're interested in their witch trials, should check it out. Because they got a list of all the victims. Uh, people in the... Um, comment section link to other stuff this was something that i didn't i mean like i said we've all heard of the salem witch trials but i did not know that the connecticut witch, tri- witch trials uh they were the old school witch trials they were the connecticut is the black flag of hanging witches um so they're the ogs and i yeah. definitely think of this as something if you're one of those girls that's like you know i'm the granddaughter of the people you burned as witches yeah. like this is this is worth checking out because there's a lot of shit here it's a, it's a gold mine so <laughs> do that <laughs> could be its own episode I, i'm serious i wouldn't mind doing an episode on this someday just witch trials in general we kind of go over yeah the but i mean i think we could and that's something we could split up between salem and connecticut but you know uh, hold on but speaking of which there were werewolf trials over in the uk yeah that's where my people came to chicago and escape that escape our persecution <laughs> you were there you know <laughs> my ancestors we've got the fuck out of dodge yo <laughs> Like, let's go to Chicago and be electricians. <laughs> Fucking get out of here. They're on to us. You know, you do what you got to do. Um, yeah, all of these, even mine, all came from damned Connecticut. It's a very good website. Um, yeah. It, that yeah, was a good it, resource. And, uh, you know, most of the stuff I found on there. Now, there's, uh, of course, a tons of other stuff that I just felt. I don't have to explain this. We're on Connecticut. You guys know there's more to Connecticut than just what we're talking about. Yeah. Um, but <laughs> not much. <laughs> not much. But, <laughs> but well, I will say, like, one of the things that I, I don't typically do, um, and mostly that's because I'm getting ready to typically I'm getting ready to do it right now. Um, I don't really talk about like the ghost stories and the haunted places and the abandoned places because there's just so many. Unless there's one that really sticks out to me and that I find interesting, I'm not gonna bring it up during the series. Connecticut has so fucking much of them there's a lot yeah so I, that's far it's so boring like, to me so it, it, yeah it's boring to me but if but a lot of people do like that shit so if you're really into abandoned places check out things in, in connecticut um because they're uh, so far they've had the most and they're at the smallest state we've done yet so I, I don't know um but speaking of places that are abandoned there uh one place that i did want to mention that is abandoned is holy land usa Oh, this sounds like right up my alley. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I knew you'd like this. <laughs> like I said, unless it's really interesting, I'm not going to bring it up. So this is a good one. Holy Land USA uh, was opened in the 1950s by a man named John uh, John Greco. <laughs> oh, you know about this? I'm looking at it right now. I yeah. gotta go to this. Oh yeah. Oh, it closed. Oh, bring it no, back. Uh, well, maybe. Hold on. So it's in uh, Waterbury connecticut and it is basically so this guy goes and makes all these like he's like recreating places in the bible yes oh my god and so it's kind of an amusement park but not really i couldn't find whether or not they had rides um that part was kind of difficult to decipher some places said yes and then some places didn't mention anything about it the one big notable thing about it is that right outside of holy land which is still there but has been replaced a couple of times is like a fucking 60 foot cross that lights up (laughs) <laughs> yeah and a, a 16 year old girl was raped and murdered in front of it oh my uh, god yeah. it's perfect yeah, i mean not for that that's terrible but was raped and murdered there yeah. um but so they have like so it closed it officially closed in uh 1984 actually it was doing really well 
for a very long time. So a lot of people were going and checking it out, thousands of people in a year. Um, I think the record was like 40,000 in the one year. And um, original attractions of the site were a recreation of the Garden of Eden because we know what the fuck that looked like. Yeah. A diorama <laughs> depicting Daniel in the lion's den and various rec- recreations of the life and ministry of Jesus. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So John, so John Greco ends up selling. He didn't sell it. Um, he passed it on to a group of nuns, right, when he died. And um, they would hold services and stuff there. So they have tried to, like, resurrect <laughs> Holy Land USA. <laughs> yeah sure over and over and over again they there's actually right now somebody just bought it in 2014 with plans to um resurrect it and get it back up and running it even though it says closed you can go there it is open during the day you can physically go there it's just it's not maintained at all um everything looks terrible (laughs) and it's very much a creepy abandoned um religious theme park (laughs) for lack of a better term um so i don't know pato what what, are you you going to holy land usa i mean this this really makes me want to go back to the ark thing again but uh (laughs) this because this is this is not this is a a, uh you know if i win powerball tonight i will totally reopen this (laughs) with with totally so we're um i know i brought this up last year but i ended up having a fucking open heart surgery we um we got a nativity scene like an inflatable nativity scene for a front lawn and then me and my son are building biblically accurate angels to put to put on each side of it yeah that's instead awesome. of just yeah, instead of just like you know the little wing people yeah. with halos the fucking horrifying the, nightmares yeah be not afraid you know um i love that stuff i love it so much it makes me it just fills me with wonder and joy um I knew you'd like Holy Land USA. Yeah, that was a good one. Thank you. I was I was I was aware of that. Makes me um, want to go back to the Ark. It really does. I miss that <laughs> fucking place. Well, uh, the other thing I wanted to just very very briefly touch on, um, just because I felt like I had to, um, is you know Connecticut is where Yale Yale is, and that's also where the Skull and Bone Ooh, Society is. I thought about looking into that. Good job. Yeah, and. Um, you know what's the deal with the skull and bones well nobody really knows it's a secret society you know through yale a bunch of people have been a part of it a bunch of famous people political figures you know authoritative types um but of course it's been the um you know topic for many uh, a conspiracy you know just because it is so secretive and uh, nobody ever talks about you know what happens with them just like we did with the bohemian grove i mean you i think you delivered a little bit more about bohemian grove than than i am about skull and bones but um Maybe we should do a secret societies episode one of these days, uh, and just kind of throw them all in together. Yeah, talk about all because there's not. Much, I mean, there's really nothing to talk about besides it's this group of people that meet up, but we don't know nothing about them. Disney uh, has one too. Yeah, what the thing I always thought was interesting about Skull and Bones is that supposedly um, they make them do gay shit to each other, and they they photograph it, and that's that's how they. Uh, <laughs> I don't want people to see him doing gay shit. Wow. Yeah, which is like, get over it, dude. Right. Who cares? Like, come like, on. Everybody does gay shit in college. <laughs> right. Oh, God. That's when you're supposed to stop at 22? Fucking, I never got that memo. Um, yeah, it, it's, it's just kind of disappointing. And it's it's one of those things where it's it's the, just the concept of it is so steeped in homophobia and like uh, yeah. sexual like rigidness. Yeah. Where like you you're terrified of the thought of having to commit these acts and you're terrified of the thought of like, Oh, that would work. So like, you know, if someone had a, had a picture of me giving another dude a blowjob, you know, 30 years from now, they could blackmail me into nuke and chili if they wanted to or something. It's like, right. what? Like that, that would put you at forever indebted to this organization to where they control you just because they have a picture of you suck it off some other guy. And then also the idea of like, oh you know what they do to each other like can you believe it like it just sounds like that to me sounds like something that like closeted guys tell each other and their mouth goes dry and they they oh really do you think that's what they do <laughs> you know <laughs> like <laughs> yeah i wish a motherfucker would i'd be like go ahead i don't give a fuck, fuck it out. Man. okay do you want me to go and tell everybody that you ate my asshole because i will <laughs> hey, 
if, 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 if that shit, let me just put it like this. If that shit was true, Jeremiah Byron would not be the fucking head of the CIA right now. It would be Pat O'Sullivan. All right. <laughs> I would I would fucking usurp the throne from that motherfucker in a heartbeat. <laughs> and suck, I, suck and fuck your way to the oh, top. Oh, <laughs> you have no <laughs> while holding the camera. I invented the selfie in the skull of this <laughs> dungeon. <laughs> I know that's what I'm saying, right? Is that all it's Come day? on. Really? Come on. You know, yeah. but uh I guess. I mean I, I, I did hear that about the I heard that about the skull and bones. That's um, that's very specific. That's how I heard it too, because that's where the bushes are from. And supposedly there's there's a there's a picture you could find somewhere of George Bush Sr. doing some shit or whatever. I don't know. But that that was always the the theory and that's how they get you and whatever, man. You know, I think George just, W. You, definitely did some gay shit in college. I'm just saying, look at the man. No, I'm sorry, his dad. The um, yeah, you said senior, but I'm just saying his son yeah. definitely, definitely did gay shit in college. Yeah, well, it comes to the territory when you do that much coke, right? I mean, George Senior, yeah, he probably did some gay shit in college too. Again, I wouldn't put it past any of these people to be doing gay shit now. Even I, mean, I would put it past anyone anywhere. I don't think you need to be. It's just it's part of uh, just the way we're wired. I think everyone. Yeah, everyone's a little queer. I don't care, right? I'm, I'm, yeah. yeah, right. You just got to find who you're queer for. I mean, that's just the way it is. Somebody said that the other day. They posted, um, who was it? Markiplier. You know who Markiplier is? No. He's he's a YouTube person. Um, and he's fucking hot. I mean, Markiplier is fucking hot. And somebody posted a picture of him. And they're like, "How dare Markiplier test my sexuality?" And I'm like, "Dude, fucking nobody would blame you. Like, <laughs> it's okay. Uh, no one cares." <laughs> I always liked I was like Damon Albarn. He was my I like musicians because I because I like them. I like their music. Sure. I have, to, I have to be like a fan of them creatively. I don't just like random fucking. They make they make uh, love to your ears. So yeah, Damon Albarn from Blur and Gorillas, or uh, the lead singer of Stabbing Westward. Those are my two. Sure. Sure. Well, I mean, I don't have like a gay list because I don't you know because I'm just gay. Like. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> well, we're talking about celebrity crushes. I'm not oh. talking. That's not it. It's not. There's only two people. Oh, I, fucking, say, yeah, I don't have a gay list. <laughs> right. Don't I'm here for all of it. <laughs> yeah, I, I got one name on that list, and it's everybody. It's not. Fun. Yeah, it's not fun for me. It's not controversial. <laughs> if I'm gay, you know, if I if I'm with another woman, people aren't like, oh, you know, they're like, ooh, you know. So it's it's not as fun be you know having having attractions to women when you're a woman. That I, I imagine at least with a man, and and you're having like you're doing it with other dudes. You're like, oh yeah, it's dirty. People think I'm dirty for doing this. Yeah. You know, there's there's a line in um chasing amy that is i don't know if it's just because i'm a guy that it it makes so much sense to me probably but i think it's it, it bears repeating the situation where uh jason lee's character is talking to joey laurie adams who's the lesbian that ben affleck is in love with and he's like now i get i i get gay dudes they they need dick they just fucking need it like you know it's want fucking dick you know but lesbians like what what's that about like, what do you what did you what did two lesbians do you know what i mean just like fucking quim like fucking bump holes or whatever like it's just oh kinda, my god i don't know i uh i dj'd at a gay bar for a while and i got to see lots of and the 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 where i dj the dj booth was like up in the wall it was like a crow's nest right so it was cool because when you were djing you could oversee the whole entire bar so you could kind of see if people were vibing if they were having a good time if they were dancing or what you know you had a really good perspective and i would watch a lot of relationships you know you can also like you're watching people hook up you're watching people meet, sure. you're watching people fight and um lesbians are crazy oh yeah they are fucking nuts and they're dangerous oh, yeah. and i've seen yes. more lesbians get thrown out of bars then uh gay dudes would just you know you play fucking kings and leon sex on fire and they just start making out randomly like that right sure and uh the the most violent shit i've ever seen was uh it was when we bowling was really big and they had like there was a lesbian we bowling league and they would okay. go up there and do we bowling. <laughs> these bitches were fucking nuts and i won't even describe them all but they were all kind of of one i gotcha you know and it was <laughs> <laughs> oh man when i saw those bitches come in fucking was like oh my god the wee bowling night <laughs> yeah i don't fuck around with that 
well, anyways, skulls and bones. You know, right. look it up. Look it <laughs> you you, you want to know more about it? Look it up. Is there something that people talk about? I'm not really interested in it. It probably is just some gay shit going on. So whatever. Which would be a lot cooler if that's all it was. What's your next one, Pato? What's your last? Um, your last one, right? Yeah, my last one. You want me to? Want me to go unload? Yeah, unload it. All right. So, um, the kind of this is like a a, a one and a half or um, the McPherson tape, something that we've talked about a lot on uh, the Wednesday show. The kind of the the precursor to the Blair Witch, not the first example of found footage filmmaking, but definitely a very early one. Uh, the McPherson tape was released in 1989. It was supposedly set in 1983 and revolves around a family that gets together for a birthday party when a uh, UFO lands on their farm and they go out to investigate and they see some grays mutilating a cow. The grays follow the McPhersons back to their house and then systematically pick off the family members one by one, abducting them and they don't return. And then the video ends with the aliens kind of coming in, swarming into the the living room where they've kind of barricaded themselves and abducting everyone. And then the camera dies. And um, it was shot on a farm in Connecticut and uh, became one of those that was it real? Was it not real? Floated around for a little bit, became very popular and was released on Blu-ray. It's on shutter now too. I think it's not real, but people kind of didn't know for a while. And eventually in 1989, they remade it. And this is what I remember seeing. And the remake was called, uh, Alien abduction. Oh God, I should have had this written down. Alien abduction. Um, an incident in Lake County. And Wait, that what they remade it? Yes, there's two different versions. How you could tell the difference is the version that I remember, and I, I misspoke earlier. The version that I remember, alien abduction and incident in Lake County. That is during a birthday party. The original was just called McPherson tape takes place on thanksgiving so which one did you remember seeing well i only saw the birthday party one but okay. it, it says it's called i watched it on shutter and it says mcpherson tape that's it's it right so it says it says both it says uh alien abduction incident in lake county mcfear the mcpherson tape but the original that it was based on, it's a larger budget version of something that was just called the McPherson tape. I want to watch that. Is it better? Um, no, because okay. it's 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 shot for shot, it's basically the same. There's no new content, oh, there's no that. new they don't do anything differently. The actors are uh are they the same people? Well, no, no, they're not. they're not the same people. And there's a little bit of a debate that I saw on YouTube where some people think that the original is more effective because it is rougher. Um, people say it's more believable. Okay. And whereas the remake that they did, they spent about twice as much on and they got some real actors and some little bit better effects and they kind of staged some of the things a little bit better. But as far as how it plays out, it's shot for shot the same. Gotcha. Except the remake is a birthday party and the original is Thanksgiving. That kind of blows my mind a little bit. Yeah. I didn't know there was two either until I did this. Yeah. And what's even cr- so so that was that was the first thing that I wanted to talk about, because I know this is something that I've brought on brought up on the Wednesday show a lot. So then I thought, well, I wonder whatever what other horror movies were set in Connecticut. Are you ready for this list? Go ahead. First of all. Friday the 13th, Connecticut, with obviously the exception of Jason X and Jason Takes Manhattan, but the rest of the okay. Crystal Lake is in Connecticut. Um, Beetlejuice takes okay. place in Connecticut. Uh, the Conjuring and the Annabelle series takes place in Connecticut. I think that actually happened in Connecticut. Yeah. yeah. Well, that right. would make sense Allegedly. why they would set it there. Right. And then uh, what else do we got? I think that's it. Um, oh, there was an Eli Roth one. Oh, Ooh. fuck. You don't know which one? Um, House of the Devil. I've never seen that one. Yeah. that. Oh, that was his first one. I'm pretty sure. I'm shocked I've never Not seen Eli, No, no, I'm sorry. Not Eli Roth. What's his name? Ty West. Oh, I was like, what? I've seen all of Eli Roth's movies. No, no, no. I'm sorry. Ty West. Ty West. I got gotcha. And that was the one where... Um, that was uh that's worth checking out 
That's a good list. That's a, that's another, a good idea. Another movie called Let's Scare Jessica to Death, which is a 1971 horror movie. I've heard um, of it. I've never seen yeah, it. Yeah. At Stepford Wives was set in Connecticut, which makes sense. Wow. Um, Last House on the Left. Whoa, I didn't know that. Directed I didn't by know West- that. Yeah. Well, we know who directed that one. Yeah. And then um, anything else good here? No, that's all I got for that. But yeah. Wow. That's a good idea. We should start doing that now with the other states. Interesting, yeah. Horror movies set in the in the state that we're doing. Yeah, I was gonna do um like true crime cases, like famous true crime cases. Um, but I didn't do. I I just I don't know. I didn't find any that were crazy, except for that girl that was raped and killed at the Holy Land, USA. But <laughs> 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 you know that kind of got roped in together. Um, but uh, that's, that's a pretty good list there, Pato. That was pretty good. That was some good stuff. I like that. Um, very cool yeah the one thing that i wasn't really going to talk about was that like ed and lorraine warren's um museum of haunted shit or whatever is now like the son-in-law who runs it he has it now in connecticut i don't know if it was in connecticut before i think it was um but it's there but i don't believe that they're legitimate people so fuck them um (laughs) so i'm not gonna promote i don't know where it's at i don't know his name i don't know that the name of the place fuck them um but they have a lot of uh really cool occulty shops and like curiosity places and things like that also in connecticut um you know wasn't really gonna get too far into that um connecticut is also i mean obviously a hotbed for ufo sightings but nothing notable um i did read like a write-up of how um ufos recently this is an article that came out in 2022 how ufos are kind of picking up steam there in connecticut I thought that was interesting, but mm. no abductees or anything extra weird. Just well, lights in the exception sky. exception of McPherson's, yeah. Well, sure, you know, but uh, yeah, I mean, nothing, nothing extra weird that happened. Um, you know, there, there is a, there's lake monster stories right there off the coast and things like that, but you know, that doesn't really seem to be prevalent anymore. Um, but I did find something that was up my own alley here, and I wanted to bring it up and it's my last one are you ready for the last one bring it home maybe the best for last i wanted to talk about the i think it's mudus the mudus noises Mm. mudus m-o-o-d-u-s mudus that's a town in connecticut and people have been hearing these strange sounds in this particular hole in the wall area of connecticut for ever um all kinds of strange sounds it sounds like you know the earth rubbing together sometimes it sounds like i mean some people even say it sounds like the earth is 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 belching (laughs) it's just weird noises that happen with no real explanation and when i say that this has been happening for a long time i mean the town got its name from an algonquin word that means place of bad noises straight up like that's, yeah. <laughs> that's what it is so it's been going on for a really long time and you know geographers are kind of confused well not geographers the people that study um uh earthquakes oh my god i don't know what they're called but those people you know they seem to think that the, maybe there's fault lines right there that that causes the earth to shift and it makes it have weird noises they do have earthquakes there um and when the earthquakes happen typically then they have an upswing in reports of these noises i think it's interesting i have been like studying these weird disembodied noises for a long time uh it started because this predates like my mothman research because people in my neighborhood on the next door you know next door i just talked about this uh which we just talked about this um the next door app is something that you can you can download on your phone and you can like get in touch with people in your neighborhood it's like social media but for your neighborhood mm-hmm. um people in my neighborhood for a long time have been reporting these weird booms these just random booms and they're not fireworks okay um because they're not able to find the culprit ever um some people you know seem to think they're like oh well it's kids blown up m80s and it's like okay but every single year a couple times a week all the time and nobody can find these kids for years um one time there was like an i mean enough of a of an impact they were saying that it was um an ice like it was like ice falling off of a property but when I'm telling you that these people have big booms happening in the in the neighborhood, I'm talking it rattles the homes. Like this is a big deal, and not just that. You know, I've had you guys that are subscribed to the Patreon. You've seen my 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 dragon thing. <laughs> um, you know, with the weird fucking noise that was coming just out of nowhere. Maybe it was a creature. We don't know. 
So I've like kind of had my own obsession with like these weird disembodied noises. I mean, just looking all over the world, there's all kinds of different weird noises happening. For no I used to, yeah, I used to love those stories. They would have them on coast to coast a lot. Sometimes they identified them as trumpets. Some, uh, yeah, the trumpets. People thought they were angels and stuff, or some people thought it was like, like some kind of like a response to fracking. Yeah, where like the bot the the earth was just like the mantle or something was cracking or some shit like right and we were hearing yeah. from all over well so when i started with the mothman research when um i really ramped up on these noises was then because i was kind of then turned on to high strangeness and kind of what was going on and uh, i woke up one morning and heard it with my own ears there was some dragging noise happening it was like metal on metal dragging and it was what it sounded like except you could hear it all over town fucking all over town and um what was weird is that I, I get on social media that morning you know it's just before work and you know i'm checking out see what other people are saying my mother-in-law my mother-in-law is like does anybody hear that noise that's happening like what is going on and she's describing the same noise it's like metal on metal dragging noise she lives in florida wow yeah and you know when i was kind of looking into it with social media i'm like looking around and there were people all over hearing it all the way from you know obviously at least ohio down in florida sporadically and um what they had said here locally was that it was a, a train hit a car and was dragging the car but this noise happened pat for like 45 minutes <laughs> and we're supposed to believe that people in florida just so happen to have the same thing happen now they didn't have an explanation in other places you know, I was kind of keeping up on it. I'm like, well, what are the other states saying then? Are these people hearing it? Um, but yeah, people heard it from all over, but not everybody heard it because not everybody here heard it either. So, and it was at like, it was like six, it was like 6.30 in the morning. I mean, it was really early. Um, I used to have a video of it. Somebody took a video of it. I didn't, I didn't even have a smartphone yet then. <laughs> and back in 2019. <laughs> but, 6.30 in the morning is not that early. I, I sometimes work six to two like that's no. half an hour of my work day yeah lazy it's bitch. no it's not that early <laughs> you lazy ginger drag your ass out of the gutter by was, then <laughs> i wasn't saying it was like super early in the morning i was saying that like i i didn't i, I back in my day didn't have a, a phone to record it with so yeah i didn't record it um you know but yeah so anyway so this these sounds in connecticut uh seem to happen sporadically and maybe they're connected to these earthquakes i don't know but they've been happening forever so. spooky that's There's only uh, one way to describe that shit, Asher's. You know what it is? Weird. Super weird. So, super gay. Connecticut is super gay. <laughs> but in the closet about it. <laughs> so, I mean. It's the only way to convince men to, to conspire against the rest of humanity is by secretly videotaping them, giving blowjobs, and then you can control the world. I mean, it's still a thing. There's still lots of men that are like, "Ooh, I wouldn't do that." I, I put, I, I stirred up the pot one day when I posted that one. Um, oh yeah, I, I shared something, and it was like, "Pegging isn't gay" or whatever, and people were like freaking out, like fighting about it. And I'm like, "You're losing your shit this much in a comment section on social media." Like, I, I don't just admit you're gay. <laughs> pegging is pegging is so repressed. It's not like, gay. It's I don't know. I mean, I. I but even think, if it was i think it's i think pegging is like doesn't want to admit it's gay that's why you're just gonna have a woman push your shit in it's like oh no it's not gay i'm having a girl do it like okay or you could have a here's the thing plastic dicks don't get soft so you're at the mercy of that thing at least if you oh, throw yeah. your ass back into a, another dude eventually he'll nut and be done and it's over you know what I mean? <laughs> like you, you're buying yourself a a, a a one way ticket to a world of pain. I don't know. There's more control for sure with an actual dick than there is with a with a plastic dick. A big hard plastic dick that'll never come. Right. I mean, he can feel you clench. Like I cannot. Right. I'm just gonna keep fucking going. And you're gonna go gonna until you get winded. <laughs> right. Or until it's time. Exactly. Right. Who wants to sign up for that? <laughs> no you know but no i it, but i mean just the fact that people are freaking out about it i'm just like wow i mean just admit that you want to kiss dudes my guy i mean <laughs> it's okay <laughs> i don't think pegging is inherently gay i think that um you know wanting to have a relationship with a man full-time is gay probably but 
<laughs> but um, you know, I don't think necessarily want to get fucked in the asses. I mean, I think not being up for at least trying it. I get it. Not, if, okay, you don't enjoy it. That's cool. Not everybody likes anal sex. They're wrong, but not everybody likes anal sex. <laughs> you know, but like at least try it before, you know, fucking I'm not gonna take you try it. And if you really hate it, then you hate it. But I mean I don't know. I think it's it's what 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 freaks people out is that it takes a little bit. You gotta you gotta remember the mindset of um, dudes that are probably like super uh, super hesitant or sketchy about anal sex are probably not very considerate or gentle uh, lovers when it comes to regular intercourse with a woman. Because That's true. If you're if 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 you're like if you can't comprehend that not everything needs to be barreled into at full force and then humped like a rabbit, like, (laughs) you know what I mean? Like I could see that though. I definitely see what you're talking about. Yeah. If you're not, if you're not coherent in nuance uh, and, and, and taking things slowly and and doing things methodically with preparation and, uh, and control, then yeah, you're, I'm sure you're absolutely terrified by the prospect. Yeah someone doing anything back there you know but as long as when you realize that there's a different way to more than one way to skin a cat uh you know well don't get me wrong i'm not saying that you should like you have a one night stand with some girl or you know and you should just open up your asshole and be like okay i'm ready you know it takes trust that's, no, trust. that's the worst thing you can do yeah right, exactly i mean as much as i love anal sex i don't do it with all my lays i mean i can't <laughs> it just doesn't work that way um you know but uh because that's dangerous i mean it could be dangerous you know and uh that's not how it works but yeah i mean i you know i I don't know why we're talking about this. Because <laughs> it's Connecticut. We don't got anything else to talk about. We're done. Because <laughs> Connecticut. No, listen. If you want to have some good butt sex, go to Connecticut. That's clear. Sure. <laughs> <Apparently. laughs> or Chicago. <laughs> or Chicago. Or Dayton. Or Kettering. Or, or yeah. Or Kettering. Um. <laughs> uh, that's what I. I hear that's the capital of. Uh, <laughs> The, the anal capital of the world yep right here no. <laughs> anyway all right well i'm a professional guys i promise um <laughs> this, this is what she's gonna charge it that's all that means that's that is that is exactly what that means um which patreon tier is that for <laughs> You know what's sad is that if I made one, people would sign up for it. <laughs> oh my god! You know what you got to do is you got to make because what the the really like the the um the Patreon accounts that have like really high end shit. It's not enough that you sign up for it. You have to sign up for it, and then after three months, you get it. Yeah, so that's true. That's what you do. So you that's should create the Patreon tier, and then after three to six months, depending on your uh, you know circumstances or whatever, I might deliver. There you go. But you got to put you got to pay for travel and things too, so it's not enough. It's not enough for you to. Well, that's. I, I mean, if I'm if I'm pegging somebody, then yeah, I suppose that's part of it—the humiliation of you being my pay peggy, and then also having to pay for everything to make it happen. And then I'll peg you, Ooh. and then you won't stop paying because you'll you'll want more of it. So, right, it's just a never ending um, <laughs> pleasure chamber. <laughs> that's what it is. Jesus, I didn't talk you into this. You did this on your own. This was all me. Yeah, this was all. This is my idea. And uh, if you're into that, let me know. Um, we'll work something out. Anyway, all right, the guys. Thanks for listening to uh, this episode of Weird World, and we'll come back with another episode. Uh, you know, next month or whatever.